Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. A few weeks ago I featured a cross made of rowan wood in one of my videos and there was a few comments about it and I suddenly thought well this is a really old witchy symbol and so I should tell you all about it. So this is my video about the square cross. The square cross is a symbol that has been used literally for millennia. Each culture seems to have their own particular symbolism for it and names. The balanced cross, the peaceful cross, the equal armed cross, the swastika. There are a variety of names for this cross and each of them has a particular symbolism, but they're all generally the same. Of course, it hasn't just been the Christians who used the cross as a form of protection. Think about uh, Dracula movies where they hold out the cross to beat off the vampires. The cross has always been a symbol based on protection. And so I wanted to delve a little deeper into this, give you a little bit of history about the cross, tell you how it was used by other people, what witches would use it for, and how you can make one. The Hopi tribe, who were a Native American tribe, called it the Cosmic Cross because they believed it represented north, south, east and west, the four directions. And there is so much symbolism for the four directions. It was very magical. You could use it as part of your divination techniques. If you wanted to know what was happening to the north, you can point your cross to the north. However, I don't really fully know any of the actual rituals that the Hopi tribe used for the Cosmic Cross. And so if you know, I would love to hear. Do leave me a comment below. It's not something that you can find out unless you ask the Hopi tribe. Anyone from the Hopi tribe listening, I would love to know. And I apologize if I haven't pronounced your name right. I presume it's Hopi, could be Hoppy, but I don't think so. Likewise, the ancient Greeks had it representing earth, air, fire and water, the four elements. Witches today might use the equal armed cross as an elemental part of their spell. You can place each element of earth, air, fire and water in one of the four quarters of the square cross to cast an elemental spell. Ancient Egypt had the equal armed cross as representing the four winds, which are, of course, north, south, east and west with, same as the Hopi tribe. And they would use it as part of their symbol and rituals in their temples. But we don't really know how because we're not ancient Egypt and sadly we've lost this knowledge. There is some written evidence, some Roman evidence, to suggest that the Celts did use the equal armed cross to represent the four seasons and possibly the four fire festivals of the year, which are the seasonal fire festivals, which celebrate the beginning of each season. The swastika is also based on the equal armed cross and before it was taken over by the Nazis as their emblem, it was well known as an emblem of prosperity and luck. I mean, there's various religious meanings in both Judaism, Hinduism and Buddhism for the swastika. But I'm just wanting to point out how an equal armed cross has been used in almost every culture. Now, witches might well know the equal armed cross best, possibly, from either my videos or this card. This is the card of the High Priestess from the Rider White Tarot deck. Now, as you can see on her chest, she is showing an equal armed cross. Now, the Rider White Tarot deck just uses a lot of symbolism within its pictures so that the reader can make divinations by using the power of those symbols. But it is part of a witch culture. Now, old ways magic would use the equal armed cross as a, mainly as a protective symbol. And traditionally, you would make an equal armed cross or a balanced cross from the wood of the rowan tree. So I need to talk about the rowan tree just to tell you how it all fits together. 
together. The rowan tree was one of the sacred trees of the Druids. It has also got a lot of symbolism throughout the Northern European history. For example, the uh, Scandinavian countries believed that man was made from the ash tree and woman was created by the wood of the rowan tree. I like that one. I like being made from the rowan tree. The rowan tree was also loved by the Fae. People would plant it around their property and around their gardens to keep away the evil spirits and the witches. I think they mean bad witches, not lovely witches such as myself, obviously, because they're not doing a very good job, are they? Because I've got lots of rowan trees around here. They're keeping away my bad side, maybe, making sure I stay on the straight and narrow. How about that? <gasps> Never thought of it that way. Maybe that's what they're doing. I am being kept on the straight and narrow by the rowan tree. Oh. <laughs> Irish mythology has the rowan tree being brought to Ireland from the land of the Thay. And as a branch containing the berries of the tree was traveling across the land, one of the berries fell and that grew into all the rowan trees that are in Ireland today. It is known as a tree beloved by the Fae. In the spring, when it frothed out with these wonderful white flowers, it's a really beautiful tree. The fairies are said to enjoy playing and living in its branches. So the red berries of the rowan tree are really rather magical. As you can see, they have a pentagram based in the bottom of them, like I have here. Pentagrams are, of course, all about protection. Rowan tree wood was therefore used for things that needed protection, like a cradle for a baby it was often made from rowan wood because this would give your baby the strongest protection. Other things such as the stirrer in a butter churn were made from rowan wood because this would keep out the evil spirits and the evil fae. Yet it allows the good fae, the fae who are going to make your butter come to butter, into your churn if needed. The Scots would use rowan wood for the cross beams that held up the chimney in their crofts. The Welsh would plant rowan trees in their graveyards because this prevented the dead from rising again. And after all, you don't want the dead to rise from their graves, do you? That's not very nice. The Welsh also thought, therefore, that it was very appropriate to be used as the wood for coffins. And there are a lot of rowan wood coffins. In England, rowan wood was very popular as a walking stick. This meant that when you went walking across the land with your walking stick made of rowan wood, it prevented you from being a fairy led, which is, I get lost, or, you know, following a willow the wisp into a bog. They would keep away because you had a lovely rowan wood walking stick. The Anglo-Saxons called the rowan tree the tree of life and as a result it makes a wonderful wood for a wand. Because it was protective and safe keeping qualities it means that the person who is casting their spells will be protected from any bounce back that you may have from a spell that goes wrong. This is why a square cross should ideally be made from the wood of a rowan tree or mountain ash. I wanted to show you rowan trees growing beautifully in the wild in November with their lovely orange leaves. But when I got there, sadly, all I found was this twig-like tree. Now fairies, the good and the bad, all a mature iron. So when you make your square cross, it is very important to not use a knife to cut it with or anything containing metal. Preferably your hands and your fingers should do the work. This means that of course you can only use the slightly slimmer twigs and branches to make your cross, but that is the best ones. These crosses need to be tied together with red thread. The red is again the colour of blood, the colour of life, the colour of protection. It has a back off quality to it. Now although the good and the bad fairies are pure iron, you want to keep away the bad fairies, which the square cross will do, but you might want to call in those fairies who are good, such as brownies. Everyone needs a brownie in their house after all. I happen to have a family living with me. I'm very pleased. They're lovely three of them. 
It's very exciting having three brownies living with you. Once you've made your square cross and you've bound it with your red thread, you can now use it. It has a protective charm around it so you can hang it from your doorways. Keep it in the glove box of your car should you be driving around. That's a particularly good one. In old times, they used to put them in the linings of their coats and put them in their hat bands and things like that. In olden times, you would find them in the linings of people's clothing or in the cuffs of their jackets. You know, those huge cuffs, they place a small square armed cross within there. My old neighbour had her chimney redone not so very long ago. And within it, they found all sorts of stuff. One of which was an old square cross, obviously placed there for protection. I personally use square crosses for protection and I have them around varying areas of my house my car, my children. I often send a square cross to those of my friends who've had a death within their family. For the square cross not only gives protection, but also gives safety and security, and is a very comforting symbol to have. So, if you make a square cross, do bear this particular form of giving it away in mind. Do you do square crosses? What do you use them for? What would you use them for? Let me know. All these comments that you make really help this community and also it suddenly makes me think, oh gosh, I must do a video on that because that's what interests me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you're going to do with your square cross. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Cover meetings coming up. Go to Patreon to learn how to be a witch. And I will see you in a few days.